I'm Allison, owner of Beltone Synthworks, a Philadelphia-based electronic musical instrument repair workshop specializing in the restoration of vintage synths and organs. This is Darian. He's the other senior tech at Beltone. We're currently not really working because of the stay-at-home order due to the coronavirus in Pennsylvania, but I thought it might be fun to make a video about this cool instrument Darian made and explain the theory behind how it works. So what we have here is just an old combo organ that I've had for a long time, and I've modified it to accept control voltage from a sequencer. This is the sequencer we're using right now, and it's actually three individual sequencers built into one box, and they're all synced by a master clock over here, which is a Korg SQ-1. The sequencer was actually designed by our friend Voice of Saturn. Each octave of the organ has been modified to accept control voltage, so I can control each octave with a different sequencer. And then I have individual outputs for each octave, and I'm sending them over to my homemade synth, which has a few filters and envelopes and other things, which then I can use to modify the sounds coming from the organ. In order to understand why this design isn't really at all like controlling the frequency of an oscillator with CV directly, you have to have a general understanding of the architecture of a combo organ. A combo organ is something that falls into the category of a divide-down instrument, and what that means is that it has 12 oscillators, one for each note of the chromatic scale. Each one can be tuned to that note with a tuning coil or inductor. And these oscillators make the 12 highest notes, so the, the highest octave of each note. And then the output of each oscillator is fed through a series of identical frequency divider circuits called octave dividers that produce the successive lower octaves of that note. Then the output of each octave divider is fed directly to the key contacts. So the key contacts are actually carrying the oscillator waveforms. And these are a series of metal contacts that when you press a key, switch that note just right onto a metal rod that is a passive mixing bus. In this diagram, the organ also has an off bus so that any note that isn't being played is just sent to ground but not all organs have this. This means we had to use CV to control switching, that is which notes of the organ are switched on at any given time. This is really different than using CV to control the pitch of an oscillator. So here's how the CV interface works. This design is going to be repeated for each octave of the combo organ. And the two main parts of it are an analog to digital converter called an ADC, that's an integrated circuit, and another IC called a multiplexer, specifically a 16 channel multiplexer. An analog to digital converter, or ADC, divides a voltage range into a certain number of slices, that's not the technical term, determined by its resolution the number of bits it has. The number of slices is the number of values that can be represented with that many bits of binary, so is equal to 2 to the power of the resolution in bits. A 4-bit ADC divides the range into 16 slices, 2 to the power of 4. The much more common 8-bit ADC divides the range into 256 slices, 2 to the power of 8. The ADC expresses which slice the incoming voltage on the analog input falls into as a binary number, with one bit of that number sent out on each of its data outputs. The bits are expressed in the form of just a lower high voltage, with a low voltage representing a binary value of 0 and a high voltage representing a binary value of 1. Meanwhile, in our design, one full octave of note signals from the organ's dividers, with a root repeated for a full chromatic scale, 
are connected to 13 of the 16 inputs of a 16 channel multiplexer IC, CD4067. A multiplexer is a switch which will connect just one of its inputs to the output. The binary number on pins A, B, C, and D of the multiplexer simply corresponds to which channel will be active. In this design, the data outputs of the ADC carrying the bits representing the voltage that was set into its analog input are connected to these addressing pins. This way, the incoming CV at the analog input of the ADC is used to decide which note of the chromatic octave is sent to the multiplexer's output and subsequently to that octave's note mix. The unused channels of the multiplexer are grouped together as the three lowest channels, 0 through 2, so that rests can easily be inserted into the sequence. When any given step in the sequencer has its pot set in the first 3 sixteenths of its travel, the ADC will output a number corresponding to an empty channel of the multiplexer, and a rest will appear on that step. So here's another look at the inside of the organ with the mod installed. All this wiring you see here is part of the mod. It's the connections coming out from every single note of, off of the dividers on its way into the multiplexers for the most part. As you can see, it's a lot of wiring and it's hard to do neatly. And this board here has all the ADC circuits and multiplexers and scaling off amps on it. This isn't something that I would expect any normal or reasonable person to think of or actually do. It was more just a weird design experiment. Not something we would ever do for a client under normal circumstances. So that's basically how it works. There are a couple of other details we decided to not really get into, like how we had to scale down the CV to use only four bits of an eight bit ADC. But basically you could use this design to CV control any instrument with a divide down architecture, either by switching notes directly through multiplexers the way we did here, the way you would in pretty much any combo organ, or by using the multiplexers to send gates the way you would in an instrument with gate controlled envelopes, like a string synth, for example. Um, I doubt that we're going to post the full schematic, but if you have specific questions, feel free to post them in the comments. We're planning to start posting more videos, so please follow us on YouTube. You can also follow us on Instagram at Belton Synthworks. Um, and feel free to visit our website, beltonesynthworks.com, and get in touch if you have a vintage synth restoration project that you might be want to talk to us about. We receive work shipped to us from all over the country. Um, thanks for watching, and now we're just gonna let Darian play this for you for a little while. <laughs>